In this lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about the channel rack in FL Studio. So the channel rack contains all of our channels in our project. So what I mean by channels is basically audio samples, VST plugins, effects, or automations. Different sounds and instruments to the channel rack, it's very easy to do that. You can do it in the browser, so if you just browse for some, let's say, sounds, you can just drag it in like that. You can also choose your own samples and just drag them in like that to the channel rack. You can also press the little plus sign here to add a plugin. So all of these are uh, FL Studio built-in plugins. We can also go to more plugins here to open up your third-party uh, VST and audio unit plugins. You can also delete one of the tracks here by just going to the track and press delete. If you want to modify the sound itself that the track contains, you just left click on the sound and you get this wrapper here, as they call it in FL Studio. And here you can modify a lot of different settings within the instrument or within the sound. So the wrapper contains, the wrapper is basically a sampler for audio files. So if you have an audio file imported to the channel rack and click a left click on it, then you will have the wrapper here. So the wrapper is basically, like I said, a sampler. If you have a VST plugin, for instance, um, you just left click on it and that will open up the VST plugin resize the channel rack so you can add in more steps into the steep step sequencer here so if you resize it by this you see you will get a lot more steps here um, you can also resize it like this if you have more channels here you can also resize it here if you have yeah if you have a lot of channels here and you want it to this channel rack window to get bigger so you can do that you can also press here to get different groups of channel racks you can also resize the name here, so you see, now I can see it says Classical Acoustic here, which I couldn't do before, so you can resize the whole track name button here um, by doing it like that. You can also play and pause this pattern by uh, clicking this button here. And here we have the main swing parameter, as you can see here. And here we have the graph editor, so you can modify the different parameters of each note in the selected pattern here. So you see you have note, velocity, release, fine pan, and other stuff like that. Then we have the piano roll overview. So you can just switch between the different views of having it like a step sequencer or having it more like a piano roll. So if you have it on like this, or if you have it on like this, but you can see the piano roll view in the selected track, you can always just cl right click to get the piano roll up like this. And now you can just edit different stuff and just close it by pressing the right click here again. So let's say that I want to edit the kick here. I can do um, a very simple thing like that and I can enable and disable the tracks here. So let's disable the keys now and just having the kick here. And let's say that I want to uh, create more advanced um, kind of notation here. I can just click here, I get up the piano roll, right click here, and now I can um, see my notes. I can also see the notes of the other track that I have here, but it, they are grayed out. And this is just because it's a lot simpler to uh, create notes when you can see your other um, tracks notes as well. Uh, for instance, if you're creating a chord progression and then you want to create a melody on top of that, that is very handy to use. So as you can see here, I have a chord progression now and I can just draw up some melody if I if I would want to. Uh, but in this instance, I'm just creating the kick so that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But as you can see here, I just right click on it and it's open and, and uh, close it. So it's very handy to have as well. And then I can go back to this view if I want to. So just left click to get um, the notes right up and just right click to delete them as well and as i showed you before you can just fill each two steps like that you can fill each four steps and uh, let's get rid of that then we can enable and disable the track here you have the track pan and you have the track volume and then you have the selection of uh, where you want to assign your track to the mixer let's create a new pattern so I'm going to go to the plus sign here and I'm, let's name these um, 
drums like that. All right. So now I have a drums pattern here and I want to create a kick drum, fill each four steps, of course. And then I want to fill each eight steps. Hats, I want to fill each two steps. Snare, each eight steps as well. And I want to move the clap and snare to these positions. All right, so what you can do here in the channel rack is to group different things together. And what I mean by grouping is to uh, basically sort the tracks in the channel rack to having them listed here in the list. Because let's say that you have um, hundreds and hundreds of different tracks in the channel racks and different sounds, uh, you will be scrolling through the channel rack all the time when you're producing your music. And that can be annoying because you maybe you just can't find the, the instrument that you want to work with, or let's say that you're just focusing on the drums, for instance, um, then it's a lot easier to create groups here. So let's say that I want to group all of these four uh, instruments together, or these uh, tracks here together. You can just select them here with this little, as you can see here, this box here. As soon as they are green, uh, you can just have them selected or that is a track that is selected but let's say that i want to select all of these four here you can just select them like that and when they are selected you just go here to the channel racks options here and you can find the group selected ones so now let's call these uh, drums again and as you can see this is now a new option in the list here so i can just pull up the drums here and this will only show the drums so i can alter between all of the tracks drums for instance and so let's say that i want to have um, more uh, melodic things or piano or stuff like that i can just group piano sounds as well and have them sorted uh, as an option in the list as well thing that is very cool with the grouping in the channel rack is that you can color all of these tracks here and you can make a gradient of it so if i go to color selected and gradient here i can choose the first color let's say that i want it to be black or yeah let's choose whatever color okay black and then i can choose the second color so let's say i want it to be green so now it will actually uh, make a color gradient of uh, from the first color to the second color and that would make it a lot easier to find these instruments if i color gradient uh, let's say uh, from yellow to white or from blue to white and then you can, can see that okay these tracks are the drums and these tracks are let's say piano sounds or or other melodic sounds um yeah you can do it like that of course um what i do most often is to just create lists here in the channel channel rack and um yeah i can sort the different things here as well um but yeah sometimes you just throw in different instruments just to try them out you know and uh, it can be very messy here in the channel rack um if you're just playing out with different instruments all the time and just throwing in sounds in there all the time um but as soon as i'm away from that creative moment and I want to actually start to arrange the track and um, yeah, just create the track basically, then I always do it like this. I organize all of these instruments and all of these uh, tracks in the channel rack. And that makes it a lot easier to create mix downs later on and um, yeah, just to arrange the track basically. Um, so it's very, very important to stay organized when you're creating your track. And um, yeah, as I said before, just separate the creative process and the more organized process. So you want to be kind of messy when you're just creating, like creating your track, you know, and getting like creative. Um, just don't focus on like grouping and listing when you're creative. I mean, for me, that's the most important thing that. I want to be creative and I just can throw in different stuff and try out all of the different combinations of sounds. Um, but then you eventually have a nice, very nice idea of a track and then you want to arrange the track and, and actually finish the track. And then 
this these different things here with organizing and lists and and organizing here and coloring and stuff that is very important but otherwise you can just have thousands of <laughs> tracks let's say and um you can't find that sound that you created before because um yeah because you have so many tracks and you can't differentiate them between because you didn't make colors and, and group them together or stuff like that so i have these notes laid out like this so let's go to graph editor and now i want to modify let's say i want to um have the clap for instance i want to shift the notes a little bit forward just to have that more human kind of feeling when you're um, having the clap so um, this is the the note so i want to shift it just a little bit like this and let's take a listen to it just overdo it so you can hear what i'm what i'm doing here when i sh when i'm shifting the uh, the note let's say that i want to have the velocity in the let's say hi-hats here i want them to be more kind of like a human is actually playing the hi-hats so maybe something like that Or it sounds much better like that. One more thing that I want to show you here in the channel rack is that you can go to, uh, let's say that I want to select all of these four um, tracks here and I have a long list of different, uh, different tracks and I want to um, kind of get more space for other instruments. What I can do here is to go to zip selected and now you can see all of these tracks are kind of hidden here. You can still see uh, by the color what track it is so this saves you a lot of space if you have a lot of different channel rack tracks here you can actually open them up like this so um yeah just click on them like that and you can also just right click on the track to kind of unzip it as well so uh, just to get back to how it was thing that I really like to have and this is a must for me every time when I produce with FL Studio is to go to the channel rack options here and choose detached uh, that way if I do something else in FL Studio I always have the channel rack open up like this so uh, I can just put it like here in the lower bottom and now I can work on my track like that and if I want to um, Let's say I want to go to one of the tracks. I can just put it up on the list here. Let's say I want to go to the drums and now I can modify the drum sounds or just modify the different notes of that instrument. So just right click like that to get the piano roll and to get rid of the piano roll. And then I can keep moving on with the arrangement here like that. There are also more options here in the channel rack. So if you right click on one of the tracks here, you have the piano roll, of course, graph editor. Then you have the rename color and icon, which is very handy to use. Uh, I just showed you that before, but I just want to mention it one more time here. So you can rename the track and color it as well. Um, let's go here. All right. So we have uh, change color, change icon. You can choose whatever icon you want here like that just to make it stand out more. Uh, you can load a new sample here, for instance. Um, you can insert something else. So you can insert a VST plugin, for instance, here. Um, so you can do it like that as well. You can replace. Uh, so you can replace this in track with an VST instrument. You can clone it. So let's say you want the exact same kick here. You can just press it like that and you clone it. Then we have delete. So you can delete the track, get rid of it nice feature here as well is to cut or copy so let's say that i have steps here in the step sequencer that i want to copy on to let's say the snare here i can just go and paste it like this and i get the same information the media information as i copied here what you can also do is to rotate so um, you can get them in time the notes in time but just shifted so if you take a listen to it and you will hear what i uh, what it actually does
this so that covers the basics of the channel racks i hope you learn a lot from this video and i hope to see you in the next lecture